Hey guys, this week's tip comes to us by request. And in this episode, what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at house accounts, in-house charge accounts, or the ability to offer customers credit. Whatever you want to call it, we're going to show you how to set it up, how to apply customers to those various levels that you set up, and then how the entire process flows through. So without further ado, let's hop in. The good news is what we're going to do today is relatively simple stuff. We only have to mess around with a few tables in Pro. I'll show you some reports and then we'll see some of the effects of taking payments on the accounts that we're lending credit to and adding interest charges and stuff like that. So we're going to start off in a basic customer view here in Pro. I've got some customers over here in my browser that we're going to play around with. And what's good about this is we really only have to utilize the risk level table right here. It's pretty easy to set up. I'll go through the boxes then I'll show you how to set up a new one just, uh, just so you can see it. So the risk level is just a unique number associated with the level. You can see in my demo I think I've got three. I've got one no credit, two with a little bit of credit, and then this third level here with a whole bunch of credit. Now to assign the amount of credit or the limit of credit that we're going to offer the customers we associate with this level, all we do is just drop it right here. You can see $500. If I want to charge interest for late payment, I put that number right here. This is expressed in terms of a percentage, so it's 2.5%. If I want the customer to receive statements, I just check this little radio box here. And if the customer needs to get 8.5 by 11 inch invoices and I've got a custom template that's going to be different than the out-of-the-box template, I just put that template name right here in this box. And that template is located in the Office folder CGI directory. This section right over here called copies, that just says, hey, when I print these statements, print a couple copies, maybe one for my file and maybe one to mail the customer. Now these other data fields down here along the bottom look like they could be pretty cool, but really they're just for information purposes. They don't do anything and they're not used to calculate terms or anything like that or add in early pay discounts, things of that nature. You can see what these are for though, it's just a notification to let the user know that our standard terms for customers in risk level 3 are 2% 10, so if the customer pays within 10 days they get a 2% discount. The rest of the payment is due then every 30 days. Our term is set for 30 days in this case. Early pay discount you can see over here 10 and 2 again. And again, these fields are completely informational, they're not used in any calculation. Even if we have an early pay discount, which I'm going to show you here in a little bit how we handle that, it isn't using these fields in this particular table. This is just for information. Information. So to add a new level, it's just like the rest of these tables in SMS Pro. You just come up here to plus. We're going to say our next level is four. We're going to type in a descriptor here. We'll just put test. And let's say our credit limit in this case is going to be $1,000. There's really not a whole lot to it. You can apply that. Now you can see that we've got four different levels set up in the system. No big deal. Assigning customers to the risk level, really easy too. Bring the customers however you like into the browser. You can see I've got James Bond here. He's set up currently as risk level two. To change that, I just double tap. A little cheat sheet window is going to pop up here and I'm just going to change them to level 3. You could also just highlight that number and type in level 3 as well. And when we apply that, you can see that now when I come back and then up again, you can see that that risk level has changed. So that, now that when James Bond goes to the register, he's going to have a credit limit of $500. All right, so I'm going to hop over to POS. I'm not going to spend a bunch of time here because I don't want to bore you with the POS side. It's pretty easy stuff. Your authorized reseller is just simply going to set up a tender that is in-house charge accounts and it will go against the customer's balance. So now you remember we set James Bond up at a $500 limit. His current balance, you could show that on the POS for the cashier if you wish, so we can see the current balance is there. So I'm signed in at a cashier level right now. So if James Bond were to buy something, let's say $350 again in grocery, and I'm going to subtotal out, and here's that store charge that I was telling you about. Let's say I want to go ahead and char try to charge that amount and then confirm $350 to it. Now what's going to happen in this scenario is SMS is going to air out because James here has went over his credit limit. Now this error message and this uh, this uh, limit here can be overridden with a manager account if you wish to do that and go ahead and, and let James charge the account and then have to pay for that within 30 days just like what we set up a second ago. That's really all there is to it at the POS. There's not a whole heck of a lot to do out here. Just simply set up that store charge tender and then everything else will be managed directly by the system. Now we're back in Pro. We're in the reporting section. I simply went through the report section under customers then in the account section and in that account section there's about a dozen or so reports I'm not going to go through all of them here today I'm just going to show you a few so let's look at just the customer account totals here I'm going to go ahead and run that for the year and launch that and you're going to see that I get all the customers in my database and this is the amount that they have charged and if they have any additional activity on the account like payments and that sort of thing like you see here with Thomas Payne that detail will be here so it's basically just a detailed statement of the period that you run it for of what's going on in the customer account another good one I'll show you here is the customer payment journal 
I'm just going to run that. I'm going to go ahead and launch it for the year so we get some data. And you can see what this is going to go through. Is this is going to go through all the payments that we've received on account for, in this case, Thomas Payne. You can see the original charges that he has out here when he has multiple charges and multiple visits, and then the total amount paid. And it's going to break that down in a nice log format for you. So when it comes to monthly statements, there's a handful of varieties right here in the middle section here. I'm only going to show you one just to save a little bit of time. Most of them show similar types of data. Maybe it will be limited in views and things like that, but most of them are going to be the same. So I'm going to run the second one here in the list, the statement by strict matching two column. And I'm going to go ahead and input those customers that I know I got some data on. We're going to launch a report and see what it gives us. Now it's basically going to look a lot like the credit card statements that you probably get in your personal life. And this particular version and why I like it a little bit is it shows the elements of transactions that happen and when they happen, in this case in a monthly basis, and it's showing each individual charge. Now it's showing the date of the charge, the reference number, which is the actual number associated uniquely with each receipt or each transaction in the system, the amount and so forth. And you can kind of see how that shows it out in a monthly basis. Down at the bottom then, it breaks down by the buckets of days that the uh, payments are outstanding. So you can see it's a nice little report. Now one interesting thing that I think you may want to know is you can obviously print these out on a monthly basis and schedule that task and then have them snail mailed. But the other option is that you could have SMS automatically email these to the customers with emails on file. So let me show you how to do that real quick. So all we're going to do to set up the email functionality is we're going to go back into that same report and then up here instead of launching we're going to go ahead and click add. And now we're just going to simply add a task. If I add it to preferred reports, it's going to stick it on that main menu when I hit the reports button. But we want to add a task, so I'm going to go ahead and do that. What I want to do is I want to email all my customers that have valid email addresses in the system. Now one key to this though, make sure that you come over here and change the recurrence to probably monthly. I doubt your customers are going to like you very much if you send them this email every single day. So we're all set. There's some other settings in here that you can play around with, the description of the report and, and reporting days offsetting and things like that. But for the most part, this is how you do that. We hit done and now that task is ready to go. Now that we've set the system to email those reports out to customers on a monthly basis, let's go over a little in inside the baseball type stuff. Every system is going to have this guy back here, Launchpad, running. He's what tells the system what to do, when to do it, how to do it. And within Launchpad, there's some functionality where we have tasks that are scheduled to happen at certain points during the day or during the week. And way down here at the bottom of this uh, list is execute tasks and cube watches. So I'm going to manually execute this and watch what happens here on the screen. Yeah, I want to go ahead and do this. Now you'll notice SMS is doing some thinking and you can also see the Exchange FTP driver pop up here. What that is doing is physically emailing out those reports that we just set up in that scheduled task. So I kind of did it manually here, but that's what's going on in the background of your system. And now I'm going to hop over to my email client and I'll show you what that email looks like that the customers get. So nothing real fancy here. The customer is going to get a basic email with a PDF attachment. When we open that up, you're going to see that the PDF attachment is that same exact report that we were looking in the SMS Pro engine just a second ago. Okay, so we've passed credit on to all these customers, and now it's time for them to pay up on this. It's time to collect some money on all this uh, credit that we've, that we've thrown out there. So there's a couple ways to do this. One way is in a POS transaction. I'm only going to go through this real quickly just to give you an idea that this is an option for you. It can be done at any time in a transaction and any normal standard transaction. So in this case, I've simulated one of my boys coming in, he's buying an energy drink, and oh, by the way, he knows he's got some balance on his account that he wants to pay. So somewhere in your system, your authorized re reseller could set up a button for account payment. You're going to hit that, and you're going to type in the amount that the customer is going to pay on the account. You're going to hit enter, and you're going to see, I can enter it just like I would scan in a can of beans. All it is is a different part of the transaction of a normal grocery transaction in this case, and I'm just allowing the customer to pay there in the lane. We total out, and everything is going to be exactly what you expect. I can email email the receipt to the customer and all that good stuff. On the normal receipt, I'm going to see what they bought goods-wise, the payment that they have, and all the accounting stuff on the back end is going to be exactly what you expect, exactly like what you do with your credit card statements on a monthly basis. Only here, it's like the old days where you used to go into the department stores and pay your credit card in the store. Same concept here. So maybe a more typical option for you to collect on those accounts that you extend credit is to go through the back end of the SMS engine. We're going to be in the selling tab and we're going to go into the extended module here and we're going to go into the receivable section of the extended module. And you can see these are the open customers that I have with outstanding credit balances. And here's a, just a little update here. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to select myself. I'm going to open up the account. Now there's all sorts of activity and all sorts of data that's 
available to to you right here in this view so let's go ahead and run through that so in this particular view here I'm basically looking at something almost exactly like that report that we looked on that paper PDF report that we looked at I'm showing all the transactions that the customer have what date those transactions were and the invoice number associated and then the amounts and all that sort of thing over here to the left hand side are just activities or functions that I can do while I'm inside this customer account. Okay, so let's assume that this customer is sending in a check now to pay for some of this balance that he owes us. So the basic process goes something like this. You're going to hit the check tender button over here and I'm going to go ahead and select an amount up here, just one, and it's going to be the $67.83 amount. That's the check that was sent in to me. I want to type that in. I'm going to hit enter. Now what I'm going to do, since that's $67.83, either by the customer's choice on the, on the invoice that he sent in or just because it makes sense here because it's that number, I'm going to highlight that particular charge and then I'm going to hit the pay balance button. And you'll see what's going to pop up here is just a little window to let you what, know what's going on within the transaction set. Now on the reference number, maybe you could put in the check number of the customer. Maybe it's 1112. That's the check number that the customer sent in that's paying that. That will be kept on file in the journal so that you can match that up later if you need to. And you can see what's happening here. We've got a total payment of 67.83, and our customer balance now after that payment is 63.84. The basic math is out here. The whole key to this scenario is in order to close this particular part of the transaction, we need this piece of the transaction balance to be zero. And basically all that means is that we don't have funds sticking out there that need to be applied. We've taken the $67.83 on that check and we've applied it to this second transaction set right here. The transaction balance is now zero. So what we can do is go ahead and enter out through that and close that particular invoice. Now you're going to notice a whole bunch of stuff happen here on the screen. It doesn't have to happen this way. I did it for effect so you can see what's going on. Now a couple things. One, we got a standard register receipt over here. If I didn't have this window open, you, I could pull it over. Standard register receipt. That's an option if you need that to be printed. You can also see that it's going to fire off to my Windows printer in my back office. It did that automatically, and they could go ahead and print to that printer if I just click this particular button. Here's the receipt. Just drag it over so you can see it. So either option is there. You don't necessarily have to print both. You don't have to print either if you don't want to. You could just email those receipts and then maybe keep the log file on hand as your backup. All right, so I've gone back into the customer account. You can see the second transaction here, the one in February. You can see the charge amount and the payment amount. So the system is going to log that for you electronically here within the customer statement. Now let's say there's one of those situations where the customer's got some open balance like this that spans some various periods just like we have here and they send in say a hundred bucks. Now what you're going to do, the process is basically the same. You're going to go ahead and hit the check tender button you're going to type in the hundred bucks except this time you could if you wanted to match it to the invoices up here or you could just hit the send to open payment button and the system will automatically go ahead and pay that and apply that amount to the oldest invoices first and then leave any balances that remain open and you'll see an exact transaction set like what, what we did the only difference is instead of applying it to just one particular invoice you're sending it to open payment to apply to all open invoices based on the oldest first so one last thing I thought I'd show you is in case you're in one of those situations where you want to charge some sort of penalty or maybe some interest on customers that are slow pay, no pay, or just overall deadbeats altogether, that mechanism is set up in this system. Remember back when we first started this thing in Pro, the risk level, if I come down to the right one here, we had an interest field here that's based as a percentage. Now, 2.5% would be the interest or the penalty that I'm going to charge when I go through this next function. So basically all I'm going to do, or probably what you're going to do, is you're going to pull up some reporting like this, go into the customer accounts just like what we did before. You're going to come down to one of these aging reports. We can just pick this one, and I'm going to go ahead and pick the customer sets that I know I have data for, launch that report, and say, yeah, you can see 30, 60, 90 days. i got some deadbeats over here. Me and my youngest son, we're, we're deadbeats on that. So now we probably want to keep that report maybe print it out so we can use it as backup but what I'm going to do is hop over in to the main SMS engine into the cell tab and I'm going to go into the extended module again now you're probably by default going to start off in home that's fine just come over here to receivable hit that you're going to see just like what we did before all the customers the current account balances and the current dates within the system charging the penalty is pretty easy all you have to do is when you have the customers pulled up you're going to hit the charge interest button here and i need to change the date a little bit here so i'm going to go ahead and make it today's date so that we have some active accounts 
And now all I'm going to do is hit launch and you're going to see what it's going to do is it's going to look at all the accounts where interest could be due and it's going to say, hey, this guy here, James Bond, owes you some money. This is the overdue amount. Here's the interest that we're going to charge based on that calculation that we put back in the risk table for his particular risk level. So now it's just a determination. Do I want to charge him? If I got more on a list, I could charge them all at once or just charge him individually or I could just remove that entry. So all I'm going to do is hit charge. That entry is now going to be posted to his account. So I'm going to hop over into Pro and show you that that entry is there and then I think we're good to go. So all I did was hop back over into Pro into the reporting section. I ran a statement by date by report here and you can see that the customer interest charge that we just did for $8.75 is showing up right there just like it should. Well that's it for this week's tip. Hopefully we've given you a few ideas to put house accounts to use in your stores yet today. Until next time, have a great day.